Here I come to you guys with another plant problem and this time in this video it is all about the blight. If you've ever been growing tomatoes in your garden then we all know that at some point you're going to be touched with the blight on your tomatoes. So in this video I got five different ways that I'm trying to kind of keep this blight at bay plus one little bonus tip at the end. Let's go. What's going on my plant peoples? I am the ADHD gardener where I use gardening houseplants and humor as a form of mental health therapy. And I'm literally going to need a bunch of therapy after trying not to kill all of my plants. Before we start this video, you can catch me on other social media platforms. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. You can catch me on the ADHDgardener.com. And also at the end of this month, we will finally be starting some Patreon. So just stay tuned for that one. Now back to the video. Now you're probably asking yourself, what in the world is the tomato blight? Well, that is a fungal disease that always, well not always, but a good majority of the time, like 80% of the time, you may encounter the blight. Now the blight is a fungal disease that typically attacks the tomatoes. Now the fungal blight can actually hit other nightshade plants like peppers and potatoes. But when it comes to tomatoes, it is vicious. I can't even express to you how vicious the blight can be. Now, if you've seen my other tomato video on how I set this all up. Now, I started off with 70 plants right here and actually 10 of them died and it was a result because of the blight. Now, if we're going to tackle the blight, we're going to need to know a few things about fungus and how it grows. Fungus likes to grow in warm, clammy, humid, ridden environment. Now, if you live in one of those areas such as me, I live in Pennsylvania and it is mad humid over here. This is like prime environment for the fungus to grow. And this is the problem that we're having. Knowing that information about how fungus grows and what environment it likes, this can possibly give you more clues as to how we can tackle this whole fungus problem. As soon as you start seeing yellowing of leaves and little brown spots in your leaves, that's it. You already have early stage blight. The early stage blight is a time where we really need to hit it hard because if you let the early stage blight go too long without doing something about it, that will lead you into end stage and that is death. If you don't take care of that early stage blight, it will eventually, and I guarantee, it will end in late stage blight and that means death. Your plant will no longer be viable and you would have to yank the entire plant out. So this leads me into tip number one, which is pruning your plants. The reason why we want to be pruning our plants is for, it's kind of like a two part reason. One of them is we want to encourage a lot of airflow, a lot of circulation that will help with the humidity problem. The second reason why you would have to prune your plants is because you want to increase the distance between the soil and the leaves. The fungal disease actually kind of like lives in the soil. So you want to really increase the amount of space in between the leaves and the soil. So the most pruning you can do is on the base of your plants. So as a tomato plant grows, you'll have leaves on the top, but we want to trim and keep the base really basically leaf free. You don't want to have anything on the bottom of that. I want to say I prune at least maybe a little less than a third of my plant at the base because again, as you see, I'm having blight problems and the more space, the more distance, the better. Plant tip number two when it comes to managing your stupid blight inside of your garden is watering. Now what you want to do is not, I repeat, do not water from the top. Don't sprinkle, don't do any of that stuff. I know it's going to be raining, but we cannot control the weather. What we can control is how we water our plants. And that's what we're going to do. We want to minimize the amount of water that is being touched onto the leaves. All that water that gets touched on the leaves, it spreads the fungal spores, which means that blight is going to be spread around all the surrounding plants. Now, when you're trying to water from the bottom, you can actually water from like a little container or something like that. That's true. But if you have a lot of plants, like I have a lot, I'm using irrigation. Now you don't have to use irrigation. You can use a garden hose, whatever, but depending on how many plants you got, you may want to consider irrigation. Now with that type of tubing, irrigation tubing or garden hose, whatever, you can directly give the water right to the stems and to the roots and avoiding all the leaves on top, therefore minimizing the amount of blight, you know, uh, spreading around of spores. Tip number three when managing that stupid blight in all of your plants is removing all of the infected and dead leaves and dead plants. I know this sounds like the first one with pruning, but that actually kind of for two different reasons. My chickens, I think forever I'll be distracted by my own chickens. Any signs of dying or death, you want to remove it immediately. Uh, you do not want that hanging around at all. So if you have a dying plant like this, like it looks like it's just done, yank the whole thing. It's got to go. 
Now, if your plant that's dying or it's on its way out still has some tomatoes on it, you just yank the tomatoes. You can eat them green, you know, with some other stuff, or you can just hopefully, you know, they'll ripen. Plant tip number four, which as you can see is I am covered in all of it, is neutralizing sprays. I have two sprays that I mix and I use against the blight. Now this does not stop it, but it does slow it down. Now I have two options. The first option is a liquid copper fungicide. Now this one, according to the instructions, you would dilute it. It actually kind of comes blue. Well, at least this kind, this is the liquid copper. Now this one, you mix in, you dilute it with water, and then you spray on your plants. It messes with the pH and then it just kind of renders it neutral. The only problem is that I noticed that it starts to burn the leaves the day after. It kind of like crisps up through your leaves. They turn them like a golden brown to a crispy brown. So it is effective, but you have to watch out for the day after. You'll see some crisping up of your leaves if you put too much of it. Now this water bottle has the fungicide spray. Now with this one, I'm not gonna go directly on the leaves. So what I kind of do is just kind of spray from the top and let it mist over because I know it can burn the leaves and it can be a little extra strong for the leaves itself. So I'm very gentle with it. If the leaves of your tomato plants looked a little more brown, toasted up and jacked up a lot more than they were the day before, that means that your fungicide was way too strong. Use it on a cloudy day where there's not a lot of sun. A lot of sun on with the fungicide on your leaves will actually burn the plants. The other option is baking soda. Now, as you can see here, I've been using this a lot, so it's a little jacked up. When using the baking soda spray, you're only just gonna be mixing this with water. I do put a little more baking soda than water. I use like a four to one ratio when it comes to the baking soda. I did notice that the next day does not burn the plant as much as the fungicide does. So you'll notice that the baking soda does a lot better than the, you know, the copper fungicide. The only problem is with this is that it is not as strong as the fungicide. So you have to kind of pick your battles. You want something a lot lighter than the fungicide than you would use the baking soda. I've also heard of people use peroxide as well on your plants with a certain dilution. You can use that also. Remember, it's all about changing the alkalinity or changing the pH of the fungus. Now for a water bottle like this, I'm putting at least, oof, three tablespoons of baking soda, two tablespoons of baking soda. I know I put a lot of baking soda in it, but this actually works and it does not harm your plants. I do not notice that there's any burning of the leaves at all with the baking soda. Plant tip number five is covering the ground below the tomatoes. Now what I have here is a straw bale. Now this is gonna be a big one and it's gonna be really effective with the ground cover. But before I even put that on the ground, I have weed fabric right here. I'm just recycling this material. It just so happens that I used it last year and I just kind of ripped it up. I'm gonna take this material first cover the entire ground of my garden beds, and then I'm gonna be taking the straw and covering it on top of here. What we need to do is cover the entire square inch area of your garden bed, wherever your tomatoes are. We need to cover it with something thick that's gonna withstand a bunch of rain. The rain or any kind of watering from the top is the enemy of the blight. I'm going under the assumption that you're not gonna be watering your tomato plants from the top anymore. So we do have to worry about the rain. We cannot stop mother nature when it comes to rain, so we're gonna have to work with it. And that is where the ground cover comes into play. Once those water splashes onto the soil, then from there it splashes up on the leaves. And that is another reason why we're keeping the pruning. Remember the leaves all the way far away from the ground? That's why. Fungal spores, they start to just go everywhere and we don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this weed fabric, cut it down and cover the entire garden bed. After that, I'm gonna be taking some straw and covering that. Hopefully the straw will absorb a lot of that moisture from the rain or anything else like that, but it will not penetrate past the weed fabric. Let's see. Okay, first layer of protection down. I put them all the way at the end of the garden bed. I know, isn't that a lot of work for tomatoes? Oh, I'm telling you, the organic life is not easy, all right? But you know what? We get a lot of benefits out of just growing organically. I'm really hoping with these five tips in this video that we really can save and manage the tomato plants that we have still here. But you know what? In the end, some of them may die, which brings me to the bonus tip. If you're still watching for this long, kudos to you, mad love. So the wonderful tip about this is that you can save your tomato plants before it completely dies using propagation. Tomato plants are one of the easiest plants to propagate. I mean, it really is pretty, pretty simple. All you gotta do is get to the top of your plant that's still all green. The plant that you're gonna be cutting off has to be all green with no signs of blight. 
Propagation of your tomato plants can really save your tomato plants if they're going downhill and you know eventually it's gonna die. You can just put the tomato plant directly into the ground. I mean, them leaves are gonna look wilted, they're gonna look like crap. I know, it's gonna look dead, but trust me, it will revive. Just keep watering it like regular. If you wanna help the process along, you can actually dip it into some root hormone powder. That works out fantastic too. You don't need the root hormone powder. It'll just make your life a lot easier and just give you, or increase your chances of you know having some root development. After about a few days to a week, even water propagation is super faster than soil. Look at that, all you do is just leave it in water. Don't forget to make sure to change the water frequently just to promote some oxygen in the water. And there you go. Then you'll be able to transfer this to the soil. If you did enjoy this video and you wanna show me some love, then don't forget to smash that like button. I really appreciate it. Also, if you haven't already, then consider subscribing. I drop a video every week and then some in between. Also, don't forget about the notification bell because without the bell, you won't know I'm dropping a video. Last but not least, you can catch me on Facebook and Instagram. Also on my website, theadhdgarner.com. At the end of this month, I'll be having my Patreon going up so we can all chill together on a little more personal basis. And until the next episode, you guys, I really hope that you grow your happiness one plant at a time, one day at a time. And check you out on the next episode. Peace and love.